Okay, so this is my mini lathe. And it's fine, you know, it works. It does mini lathe stuff, just like it's supposed to. But right now, it is bone stock, out of the box, exactly how it comes from the factory. And I wanna soup it up, make it work better, customize it, turn it into, dare I say it, more of a premium mini lathe. And I don't know how you feel about this, but for me personally at least, when it comes to things like machines, tools, machine tools, if there's one thing that just doesn't scream premium to me, it's plastic. And don't get me wrong, plastic has its place. But I mean, you gotta admit, there are at least some things that just feel better when they're made from a more substantial material. Like for example, these are the hand wheels on my mini lathe. And I mean, look, they're hand wheels. They do what they're supposed to do. But being the hand wheels, they also happen to be one of the things that you're gonna interface with or touch more than any other thing when you use your machine. Which means that over time, these hand wheels are gonna begin to define what it feels like to use your lathe. And quite frankly, I find it hard to believe that anybody would argue that something like this would feel anywhere near as premium as something like this is the hand wheel on my South Bend lathe. As you can see, it's made from a solid piece of metal. And when it comes to feel, you just can't beat a solid chunk of metal. So I would like to recreate something like this for the mini lathe. And there are, of course, a lot of ways that we could go about doing this. However, recently, I have actually been really wanting to get more into metal casting. But the best way that I know to make molds for metal casting is using a 3D printer. I mean, I'm not a woodworker, I don't have any woodworking tools, and I'm certainly not gonna be whittling casting molds using my pocket knife. Unfortunately, my 3D printer is like, I think six or seven years old now, and quite frankly, it just stopped working a while ago. So for that reason, I actually haven't been able to do a lot of the stuff that I've been wanting to do on the channel, simply because I haven't had a way to print molds for metal casting. That is, until today. What I have here is the FlashForge AD5X 3D printer. And this thing, you know how I just said that my 3D printer is like six or seven years old? And I'm not saying that my 3D printer is a bad printer because when I bought it, it was actually a pretty good one. But this thing is something entirely different. I guess unbeknownst to me, apparently 3D printing has come a long way in the last few years. I mean, this thing has all the bells and whistles. Stuff that I didn't even know that 3D printers could do, this thing's got it. For example, and most obviously, no more printing in one single color or even one single material for that matter. You can load up to four completely different colors and or materials on this thing and print from them all at the same time. So you could print different parts of your projects in completely different materials if you wanted to. And that print, by the way, is gonna finish lightning fast and be absolutely perfect every single time. This thing can do what my old printer would do in like, I don't know, a 10th of the time. It's crazy how fast this thing is. And it's all automated. It has automatic bed leveling. It automatically loads your filament for you. You just stick your filament in the little white tube at the bottom of this box. It grabs your filament and takes care of the rest. It has built-in networking with live monitoring and a phone app. So this bad boy is what we're gonna use to print the patterns for the castings we're gonna make. Here is the design that we're gonna be using for the castings. This is just something that I whipped up in CAD. As you can see, the design is two different pieces because obviously we're gonna need two different halves to make up the casting mold. And as usual, I will be making these files available on my Patreon in case you wanna follow along. I have already imported the design into my slicer software. So from here, I can send it directly over to my printer and get the print started. I did try to film a little time lapse of the print because I thought that would be pretty cool to watch. However, I realized I've never actually done a time lapse before and I really wasn't sure what settings to use. So I don't think it came out too great, but here it is either way. Anyway, here is a look at the finished pattern. I think it came out really, really nice. 
However, before we can actually use it as a casting pattern, we need to get rid of the 3D printed layer lines. The casting sand can stick to those layer lines and just make it difficult to release the pattern from the sand. And the easiest way that I can think of to do that is to just cover the entire pattern in several layers of spray paint. The drawback to this is that it does take a bit of time because you do need several layers and of course you need to wait for the paint to dry, but it's definitely worth it because as you can see here, what you end up with is a really nice smooth texture all over the surface of your pattern. And now that I have my pattern ready, I am finally ready to start ramming up this mold. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I think that this is the third time that I have actually tried casting something, so I definitely don't have a lot of experience with this, and everything that I do know about it, or at least think I know, I've just learned by watching other people do it. So this particular part in the process is always a bit stressful for me, just because there's a lot of work involved, and it's just really, really easy to mess this part up but things seem to be going pretty good so far. As you can see, I have these little registration holes in the two halves of my pattern. These just take quarter inch pins and they allow you to register the different halves of the pattern correctly and they make sure that they don't move around on you when you're ramming up the mold. All right, so ramming up the second half of this mold is the same exact thing as the first, so I won't make you watch me do all that again. We'll just kind of skip through this quickly. And we're gonna move on to what for me is definitely the, the scariest and I think probably the most difficult part of making this mold and that's putting in the risers. So to do this, I have to remove one half of the pattern and then what you see me doing here is I'm pushing this brass rod through the center of my pattern and I'm just doing this to make a couple of marks on the other side of the sand. Once I've done that, I put my pattern back together and then put the mold back together. And now I can see those two marks on the other side of the sand and I'm gonna use those to locate my two risers. Like I said, this part's definitely a bit stressful for me just because of how much work I've put into the mold at this point and I have to put these two big holes in it as the very last thing and it just feels like it's really easy to mess things up but fortunately everything goes really really smooth so here you can see I'm just adding a gate between the two sides of my mold and we're good to go I'll put everything back together and we are ready to start casting the metal that I'm actually going to be using to cast these hand wheels is called Zamac if you're not familiar with this stuff, it's a really common casting metal. It's really easy to find online. But really, the main reason I'm using it here is because I have this whole bag of chips and scraps left over from a casting project that I did a while ago, and I've really been wanting to use this stuff up. Last but not least, I'll top it off with a little bit of borax, and I'm ready to start up the kiln. Once everything starts to heat up and melt down a little bit, that entire crucible full of chips and scraps that I had is very quickly reduced to a tiny little puddle. So I add a little bit more material and at this point I'm just waiting on everything to melt. Which actually doesn't take very long at all thanks to this crazy burner that I have on this kiln. This thing is honestly like hotter than the sun and I am ready to pour in no time at all. And while we're pouring, let's take just a quick second for safety and acknowledge the fact that at this point in the process, I have indeed put on a pair of pants, despite the fact that it is like 110 degrees outside. Please be smart, be safe, and do not pour molten metal in shorts and flip-flops.
So I let everything sit to cool overnight. It's now the next day, and we can open this thing up to find out whether or not I got something usable or I get to do all this over again. And fortunately for me, it looks like everything did come out fairly decent. It's definitely not perfect, but I think we got a couple usable parts here and we can move forward. And after a little bit of initial cleanup and fettling, here's how things are looking. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. I think they're really starting to take shape, so I am ready to move on to machining. I'll start off over at the lathe, and fortunately, holding on to these things is going to be pretty easy. You can see I'm flipping around the jaws to my four jaw chuck. Once I get these flipped around, I can hold on to that outer ring of the hand wheel, which will give me full access to the central hub so that I can clean up the outside surface and drill the main bore. And I'm able to get it dialed into within about four or five thousandths, which I think is really good considering it's just a raw casting, so I'm ready to get started. So after the initial machining, I think things are starting to look pretty good really, but I was looking at the hand wheels on my south bend and decided that before we step away from the lathe, there's one more thing that I wanted to do, and that's just attack this outer ring with a couple different grits of sandpaper. This is the part you're going to be grabbing with your hands pretty often, so I wanted to give it a nice smooth texture. And after a little bit of sanding, I really do think that just looks and feels much better than that sort of raw sand texture you get from the casting. And at this point, it's a little after 6 o'clock. I've been in the shop all day. And even though I do still have a little bit of machining that I have to do over at the milling machine, I decided to go ahead and knock out the painting at this point before I went in for the night. This way, I can let the paint dry overnight so that when I come in tomorrow morning, that paint will be dry and I can just go ahead and knock out the rest of the machining. As opposed to going in for the night now, coming in, doing the machining, and then painting and having to sit around for a couple hours while I wait for it to dry. So it's the next morning, my paint's dry, and I'm ready to take these things over the finish line. I've got a couple things left to do, starting with drilling the hole for the little handle that will be attached to the hand wheel. 
I'm just using a little point here to locate the feature because it's not super critical. And I'm going to spot the hole, drill it, and tap it. This metal is really soft and easy to work with, so drilling and tapping this stuff is no sweat. And now there's only one thing left to do, which is to drill and tap the hole for the set screw that's going to be used to secure the hand wheel to its corresponding shaft. Now, this hole does need to line up with a divot that's on the shaft so the set screw can match up with that divot. So I'm just going to use an edge finder here to locate the feature, then drill and tap the hole. And that's it. Now I get to unwrap these things and see how they look, which is kind of like unwrapping a really terrifying present because it has been a lot of work that has led to this point. And if they look awful, I get to do all that work over again. And there we have it. They actually came out really, really nice, I think. However, in full disclosure, I definitely do not like the paint job. I wish that I would have painted them black, <laughs> but I just didn't have any black paint on hand. I don't know, maybe I'll actually go back and repaint them. I think that they would just look so much nicer with a black accent as opposed to this dark gray. So I don't know, if you see in the thumbnail that they're <laughs> black and not dark gray, then you'll know that I went back and repainted them. But aside from that, honestly, I think they came out even better than I was expecting, really. I mean, even before installing it on the machine, just holding it here in my hand, it's got some serious weight and heft to it. It just feels really solid and chunky in the hand. I mean, the difference between this and this is just absolutely night and day. I think that this one probably weighs 20 times what the plastic one weighs. And I don't know, the best way to put it is that this just kind of feels like a, a throwaway toy and this feels like a proper piece of kit. So anyway, I guess the last thing to do is to get them installed and see how they look and feel on the machine. Oh yeah, that is so much nicer. This is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Honestly, I really don't even know how to describe it, but that extra weight and rigidity, it really does add something, I guess, intangible to the way that it feels. Anyway, that's it for me. That's all I got for now. Like I already mentioned, I will have the files for these available on my Patreon in case you want to make a set for yourself. Also, I'll try and leave some links for that 3D printer either in the description or maybe pinned in one of the comments down below. And if you want to check out the first video that I did on this mini lathe, I'll leave a link for that right here in this corner. As always, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so very much. I do sincerely appreciate it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.